Good afternoon, Grade 8. Welcome to this lesson on mechanical systems and control. Before we continue, I'd like us to talk about the assessment. Um, I have been talking to the HOD for senior phase. She explained to me that uh, some of you couldn't upload your, um, your tests. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I also don't know what happened. I'm still talking about the, the um, test that you wrote. Um, I'm explaining that the school had a problem of um, a full server. So when you're trying to upload something into it, it didn't take any more files so we agreed that we are going to give you more assessment so that um you will be able to upload that you'll be able to send it so um you will be writing that assessment tomorrow i'm just checking with the hod if this applies to grade 7 8 and 9 but we encountered the problem mostly in grade nine. Let me check. I want you to tell me, did you all upload the test? Who of you did not upload the test? Yesedi, did you upload the test? Can you guys hear me? Natalie, did you upload the test? You said you didn't. Uh, Natalie, did you upload? You did upload. Okay. Did you have any problems with the drawings? Natalie, could you? You didn't have any problems with the drawings. Let's say the, you, you, you didn't upload the whole test. Um, where's the rest of the class? I want you to talk to me and tell me what happened. Let me check. Asanda? Asanda, Hakim, Mosa, Lizen, Cheza? I, 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 I would like you to talk to me. Please tell me. Hakim, did you, did you upload your test? No. Cheza, no. Okay. I will ask the management uh, to allow you to write uh, tomorrow because I know they told me certainly that um, Grade nine will be writing, but I'm just checking with you because it seems like some of you didn't upload the test. So I think it would be best if all of you were writing tomorrow, just um, a short test. It won't be as long. It won't be as long as the one that you, you wrote, but it's just a, a, a test. Uh, it will be based on term one and two work that will assist you those who couldn't upload some sections of the test and those who didn't um who didn't submit at all Lisedi, i wanted to submit but it did not allow to upload with 
it uh, it with an an answered question. Okay, let's say. Okay, we we will try and give you um, another assessment tomorrow. Okay, right. The test for the, that was written on the twenty fourth last week, Friday, Lizen. Okay, my children, let us see what we are going to do today. Today, we are continuing with mechanical systems. Um, we are doing, we'll be concentrating a lot on gears and the winch. Lizen, you wrote and you submitted. Okay. Okay. We'll study gear systems and solutions of mechanical advantage problems. We'll also design winches. Okay. Now remember yesterday we were we were practicing these drawings. Tell me, did you practice these drawings at home? Engineers, please tell me. Did you practice these drawings at home? Natalie, you didn't you didn't practice the drawings? <laughs> hey, listen here, grade eight. You guys are engineers. Do you know that technology is engineering? So this is primary school engineering. So you need to practice whatever we are doing here because uh, what kind of an engineer doesn't know practical skills? So whatever we do here, try and, and, and find time at home to practice it, okay? Okay, now, this is a drawing. Remember, yesterday we were looking at the diameters of the of the of the gears and the the, the, the graphic symbols for the gears. How to to do a a graphic representation of a gear system. So I, I'm bringing this again. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm bringing this again so that you can remember. This is what you need to practice, right? Mm, step one, how to draw this uh, gear system. Okay, we'll do the 3D shapes, Natalie. Step one, you start by drawing a horizontal center line for both gears. There's your horizontal center line. And it's a broken chain line there. Okay, you start by drawing the horizontal center line. And then you draw a vertical center line for the driver gear on the left. There. This is the driver gear. It is a small gear. We have done the mechanical advantage of these systems. We already know that. Hang it. Now you have your um, a vertical line in the, say, in the middle also. This marks the center of the driver gear wheel. Step three. You calculate the pitch center distance. How do you do that? You half. Okay. Um, this one is, is 36 millimeters, this one. So you will be using your, your compass and your ruler. You'll be measuring that on your, on your ruler. Okay. You have to place your compass on your ruler and you measure the half of 36 millimeters. Okay, so this, this, this space, it will be a half of 36 millimeters plus a half of 72 millimeters. So it will be 54 millimeters. You mark 54 and you draw a vertical line. Measure the center of the driven gear from the center of the driver. If you do that, you will be you see, you'll be drawing this vertical line after you have measured the 54 millimeters. You'll be drawing this vertical line. It is a broken chain line too. And you will have marked the center of the driven gear. I hope you can see that. I, st I said you start with the, the horizontal line, a broken chain line. And then you mark on the horizontal line, you mark a vertical line that will be the center line for the driver. Then from the center line of the driver, you measure how big is the driver. The driver is 36 millimeters, so you are going to have that 
plus how big is the driven? The driven is 72 millimeters and you have that and then you will measure 54 millimeters. So from this vertical line, you will measure 54 millimeters and then you draw another vertical line. That will give you the center of the driven gear. So the, on these points, that is where you are going to place your compass, where these lines intersect. That is where you are going to place your compass. This is a 2D drawing that we are doing right now. We are going to look at the 3D drawings. Right. And then step four, measure the center of the driven gear from the center of the driver gear. Okay. From here to here. Use a compass to draw the two pitch circles so that they just touch each other. Okay. In case... In this case, the pitch circle of the driver gear will be 36 millimeters. Okay, the, the, the outer, okay? So you will need to set the compass on a radius of 18 millimeters. You, the radius is from the, the center to the, to, the, to, the, to the pitch circle. So, you will measure half of that, half of 36, which will be 18 on your compass. Then you place the compass on the center spot. The radius setting of the larger driven gear will be 36 millimeters, twice as big. Okay? Right. <coughs> so, the radius of this drive driven gear is half of 72 millimeters. I think you understand that. Then you put your compass here. When you draw the, these um, lines with using your compass, when you draw the, 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 the circles, the lines will intersect. Okay. Step six, use your compass to draw the inside diameter and the outside diameter circles. So the inside diameter, you have your inside diameter there, it's 64 millimeters. So it means you will uh, have a radius of 32 millimeters. You put your compass on the center, you put your compass on your ruler first, you measure the radius of this inside diameter then you, you, you will draw the inside diameter. It will be a solid line. And then you come to this outer diameter and you, you, have, um, you have to measure 80 millimeters. Then that will be a radius of 20. Then you draw these lines. You, should, you must just remember that when you are um, determining the radius, you have to half the measurement of the diameter. Okay, and then you will achieve this. Remember to draw broken lines. This one, the inside diameter is solid and these ones are, are broken. Then see if you can achieve this drawing. Okay, this one, the driver, the outer diameter is 42.5. Okay, so you will then practice to do this drawing and see after that, you have to measure and see if you did, um, you did um, achieve the specifications, okay? Use your compass to draw the inside diameter and outside diameter. Now add the information that tells people about the teeth. This is written underneath each gear wheel or on a table next to the drawing. So when you... Um, busy with your drawing, you must also try and uh, write the information about your, the system that you have drawn. It is there in the bottom, at the bottom, you see? There, it is at the bottom, and then you label your drawing accordingly. Okay? Right, try that. Okay, did you understand it? Do you understand how you draw this? 
You start with the horizontal line, then the first vertical line, and then you measure the, the radius. And then you come to this side, you, um, you, you measure the radius, then it will give you this distance, and then you start drawing the gears. Okay. <clears throat> this, there's another system with um, a, a, an, an idler gear. This one was just um, two gears rotating in the opposite directions. So when we want to achieve a, a, a movement of gears into the same direction, we introduce the idler gear. You already know that you've done it. Ne? Right. Now, this is how you draw it. Okay. You have gears there that are of um, different sizes and the specifications are given. You will do the same. You will draw the horizontal line and then work out the radiuses, okay? And then it will, you follow these steps that you took here, just that now we have three gears. So you will start by doing it for these two gears, then you move, you do it for these other two gears. Okay, you always use your compass and your ruler so that you can measure the radius of this 64 millimeters. What will be the radius here? What will be the radius? <coughs> please be with me, be in this lesson, please. What will be the radius of this 64 millimeters diameter? What will be the radius when you measure on your ruler? Yes, you have to draw that. You have to draw that. What is the radius? Grade eight, here we have the, the, the inside diameter. Actually, this is the inside, the inner diameter. This is the inner diameter. This one, this solid line, it's the inner diameter. So this, this, um, this arrow is wrong. It should, it should be pointing to this solid line. So if you want to measure the inner diameter, <clears throat> you have to measure a radius of how much? Grade eight, speak to me. Don't speak amongst yourself, speak to me. <laughs> um, of 32 millimeters because it is half of the, the diameter. Okay. And then um, at the bottom, when you finish drawing, you must give their specifications. Driver gear pitch 7.5 millimeters, number of teeth 15 teeth, um, the diameter is 36 millimeters, okay? You give the specifications of the idler gear. You give the specifications of the, um, the, 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 the driven gear. <coughs> okay. Practice these drawings. And we also practice to draw these drawings because they are two dimensional drawings. We can draw them on a square grid. Remember, when we draw um, two dimensional, like we drew two dimensional when we were doing other 
um, systems, when you did structures, okay, you use the square grid. And you can see, you can see how you plan for your drawings. You start with this, these lines first, because you have to measure the, the um, to, to, to measure the, the, the diameters of the different gears. And then you draw these lines, broken chain lines, and then you can start using your compass to draw, okay? So if you had to draw this system here on a square grid, it would look like this before you start drawing, okay? Okay. <clears throat> right. Now, um, because we have to design and make a truck, and uh, actually, what are we doing with these trucks? with these gears. We want to use the gears for our winch. Okay, we need a system in our truck that will have a gears in it. So we are engaging in a project of that system, right? Write a design brief with specifications for gears. Gear systems have two important uses. A gear system can give a mechanical advantage. In this case, a small driver gear is used to turn a larger driven gear. The output of the system turns more slowly, but with greater turning force. Grade eight, let me remind you again, although it is not in any of these slides that we have today. After you have drawn a system like this, you can be asked to draw up a systems diagram for your gear system, okay? Even if it's a pulley system or whatever system, you must be able to say what is the input, what is the process, what is the output. So, if the system gives you a mechanical advantage, you must be able to put that in a systems diagram, right? A gear system can give a mechanical advantage. In this case, the small driver gear, now that is the input, is used to turn a larger driven gear. The output of the system turns more slowly. That is our output. The, in, the, the, the process between the input and the output, you have the process whereby you must explain what is the rotation and the changing of movement, okay? <clears throat> the rotation perhaps could be with one full rotation of the driver gear, there is half. Remember, we, we did that in when we were analyzing the systems that we, we, we did before, before we started drawing. We said um, one full rotation of the driver results in a, um, a half rotation of the driven, okay? And the output, the system turns more slowly with greater, but with greater turning force. And we call that torque. When a, a system has greater turning force, that is called torque, right? And another use of gear systems is that gears can also give a speed advantage. In this case, a larger driver gear will turn a smaller driven gear. The gear turns faster than the driver gear, but with less turning force, okay? Now, you must be, you must remember this at all times because if there's assessment and you are asked to explain two important uses of gear systems, this is it. It is the mechanical advantage and the speed advantage. And you must be able to explain the mechanical advantage. When is it that we have a a mechanical advantage in a system and when is it that we have a speed advantage 
in a system. Right. So, because now we are engaged in the design process, we get into the design brief. Okay. A design brief for a gear that gives a mechanical advantage. And uh, this brings us to a winch, a winch for a tow truck. Right. This is the tow truck. We have seen something like this, now. Yeah, these, these trucks, you find them at the corners of the roads. So they're just available in case there's an accident. So um, this truck will have a gear system and a pulley system here because you can see those two pulleys there and you have a cable there and you have a hook that will attach the load. The load in this case could be uh, it could be a, a, a car wreck, a wreck of a car that has been involved in an accident, okay? But this can tow any load, any, except, just except for the uh, car wrecks, there are many other loads that this system can pull, right? So winches are used to pull broken down cars onto the back of a a, a tow truck. So this is just winches, the, 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 the mechanism of winches applied to a tow truck. Okay, so what is the problem statement? A problem with this winch. The company using this winch has found that it, um, it is not powerful enough to pull large vehicles. The company asked you to improve the winch. They want the winch to pull large vehicles so that um, um, to, 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 to pull large vehicles that are three times as heavy as ordinary cars. So we actually need a stronger winch. The word tow means to pull a car behind a moving truck for a certain distance. Tow trucks can tow cars but they can also pull cars onto the back of the truck to carry them to the repair shop, okay? So that is our project. We must design a stronger winch for this tow truck. Okay, grade eight. Now you know that when you're engaged in the design process, you have to write a design brief. Okay, write a short, clear sentence, uh, a few short, clear sentences that summarize the problem that needs to be solved, <coughs> as well as the purpose for the proposed solution. Begin your first sentence with the words, I am going to design, I am going to design a gear system for the winch of a tow truck to allow it to pull a vehicle that is up to three times as heavy as an ordinary car. Remember, that is what we have asked to do. Are you with me? So this is the design brief. Okay. So in any assessment, you can be given a problem. Then you have to state. Okay. You have to state the design brief so that you show that you understand the design process. Specifications. Write a list of specifications for the new winch solution. Remember, specifications are lists of things that you should, that uh, your solution must do, and some things that it must not do. Okay? So, for a stronger winch, what are the specifications? What specifications must we have to build a stronger winch? The winch must be able to pull vehicles that are up to three times as heavy as an ordinary car. The gear system should not change the direction of rotation. The cable of the winch must be strong enough not to break when it pulls the weight of three cars. Actually, it is, way, is the weight, it is the weight of one car, but it equals that of three cars, okay? A design for the improved winch, 
describe how you are going to improve this winch. I'm going to add a gear system to the winch that gives a mechanical advantage, but that does not change the direction of rotation. Okay. How will you know that the winch can pull vehicles that are up to three times heavier than an ordinary car? The driven gear will be three times the size of the driver gear. Remember, that is what gives us mechanical advantage. Okay, so in this case, because we want to pull a weight that is three times that of an ordinary car. So this, this system of gears, in the system, the driven gear must be three times bigger than the driven, than the driver gear. Do you understand what you must do here? You can even be asked to draw that system. You just have to show that you understand what you want to achieve because you want to achieve greater mechanical advantage. Hmm? Grade eight. You want to achieve greater mechanical advantage. So to do that, you must make a system that speaks directly to the problem. If you want to achieve a, a, a three times, one is to three mechanical advantage, so you have to make the driven gear three times bigger than the driver gear, okay? But if you wanted to, to acquire um, speed advantage, what would you do? Come grade eight, come, come. What would you do if, you, if it's not mechanical advantage that you wanted here, but speed advantage instead, what would you do? What is it that we do when we want to achieve speed? Where's my class all of a sudden? Grade eight? Are you still here? Uh, Natalie, when you want to achieve speed, the smaller gear becomes the driven. But when you want to achieve mechanical advantage, the smaller gear becomes the driver. All right? I just want you to, to understand those, I mean, that kind of basic knowledge. Um, Preston, if you want to achieve mechanical advantage, the driver gear must be smaller, the driven gear must be bigger. Preston, this is your, 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 your system for mechanical advantage. My question was, what is, it, what is it that you must do to acquire speed? The driven gear must be smaller, Preston. Very good, thank you. Okay, so those are the specifications for this winch. Now let's just look at winches. An example of a winch. An example of a winch. Right. Okay, but now you're clear. Are you clear now, Preston? Okay, let's proceed. Let's look at an example of a winch. Now you see a winch has gears and it has pulleys. This is just an, a broader image of the winch. You do not see, thank you. You do not see the gear system. What you can see here is the, the pulley and the motor and the winch drum. Okay. Then you connect a, a drive system here. Okay, but tell me, 
What is it that is powering? What is it from looking at these components of the winch? What is it that is the input of this winch? Hmm? Do you think it's, um, it's an electrically operated winch or it's a manually operated winch? Looking at these components. Come grade eight. What is the input of this system? When you look at the components, there you have a motor, you have the winch drum, you have the wheel, and you have the main lift. So my question is, what do you think is the input here? The input is electric, yes. It is an electrically operated um, winch. So the, 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 the input here is a power source. Okay, the input here is a power source. Remember our power sources, we classify them under um, DC, direct current, which is batteries, and AC, which is alternating current. Now that is your, your, your mains electricity. That is your, 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 your plugs electricity, okay? So this winch here could be directed, could be operated by means of direct current or alternating current. We know that because we have a motto. So there's a motto on this winch. Now listen, you don't see gears here, but let me tell you where this, um, where this motto, attaches to the winch drum. You see, there's an attachment between those two wheels there. Those are gears. They should be gears, okay? But you will see, I will show you in other winches. So that when this motor rotates, then it starts to make a, because it is meshed with the drum of the winch, so the drum will start rotating too. When the drum is rotating, there will be movement of this belt. And then um, that will uh, move the, um, the load along this wheel, which will be a pulley. So this is an electrically operated winch because it has a motor. Okay. Right, let's look at winches. Now, a winch, um, how a winch works. So you have a ratchet and pull system inside this winch. Remember the ratchet and pull system? The ratchet and pull is a, um, it is a, a, a control mechanism, okay? A ratchet and pull will allow movement in one direction and not movement in another direction. Can you imagine if you have your, let me come to the tow truck here. If you have your winch system here and it is pulling a load and that load is very heavy and you didn't have a ratchet and pull system inside the winch, you know what would happen? Instead of this, this pulley system and the, 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 the cable pulling the load, it would be the load pulling. So there must be a ratchet and pull system inside that will allow the, that will allow one way movement. Hmm? Remember, this is the ratchet and this is the pole. So when this is moving anti-clockwise, yeah, the anti-clockwise movement will be allowed by this ratchet and, and pole. So this is the ratchet, it will be moving anti-clockwise. 
But when it is trying to move clockwise, the pole will, will stop the movement. Right. And then you have your gears there. There's a gear mesh there. Okay. There's a gear mesh and that gear mesh will be the one that is giving us mechanical advantage. So the gears, the gear system gives us mechanical, mechanical advantage. The ratchet and pole system controls the movement of the cable. So which systems are devices used to wind a cable or a rope in or out so that the resulting tension pulls the object? You see, when this ratchet and pole has uh, stopped the movement of the cable, so the cable is firm, the tow truck can now pull the load. The winch drum is powered manually or by A, electrically or hydraulics. You have, a, 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 you have different systems, okay? In machines, you have your, 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 your hydraulics, like the car jack, the hydraulic car jack, electricity, you have your pneumatics. An air system, we call it pneumatics. Most um, winch drums are made of fabricated steel and are designed for a specific load capacity. Remember in our design brief, we, had, we, have, we have to design one that can pull um, a load that is three times the, the, the weight of an average vehicle. So we have to design it specifically like that. Now, this is a winch of a tow truck. This is a photo. You have your cable there, and this is the hook. If the hook is not positioned there, it will be on the load, pulling the load. So um, a winch is a mechanism that winds wire around a drum, like keeping a steady tension on it. What will keep the tension? What will keep the tension? It is this ratchet and pull system. Okay. Okay, because it will stop the cable from moving, so you have tension there. Okay, and the cable must be very strong. It must not break in the process. On tow trucks, a towing winch pulls cars onto either a towing platform. If it's a, a, a platform tow truck or up to, or up into the towing sling, if it's a drag style tow truck different types of tow trucks there. And we've got this picture from howstuffswork.com, right? You must check out that um, website. We use it a lot for technology, right? Now, what a spur gear winch looks like. Remember, when you are <laughs> having spur gears, um, when we did those drawings, okay, we did a gear mesh of spur gears. Okay, the drawings that you have done so far, they are a gear mesh of spur gears. There are other gears and they are also used in systems, but for now, we're just looking at spur gears. I think you can identify them. There's the cable, right? And there is your very big gear and your small gear. So you can see the small gear is the driver and this one is the driven because it carries the cable and you have other gear meshes there. So you have a gear system there. This whole gear system is driving this. But I love this gear mesh because you can clearly see that big gear is being driven by that small gear, okay? So that gives you mechanical advantage. We do want mechanical advantage here because we are going to uh, lift very heavy objects, okay? Right, note the cable wound around a gear system. There's the cable. So uh, I think you have seen this type of cable, have you? Have you ever seen this type of cable? And what was... Uh, the use where you saw it. Hmm? Grade eight. What was this cable being used for? 
where you saw it. I do have one like this at home. I use it for pulling the cow. I bought it for pulling the cow. You know, when you have to slaughter a cow, you have to pull it, go buy it from the farm and load it into the van and take it to the abattoir and all that. You need a very strong, a very strong cable. So one property of this, one very important property of this cable is the, is the strength. It doesn't break easily. So it is used as the belt in the systems of winches. Now you have another type of a winch and the winch is a, a manually operated one. And you can see there is a crank there. So you, you, you put your hand on the crank and you manually operate this winch. You have the small driver gear and the big driven gear there and the, and the pulley belt there. Okay, for now, let us stop there for today. This is the winch, different winches that you can find for different purposes, okay? Remember, we are, we are, we are in the process of designing a winch system for a tow truck, okay? Thank you, grade eight. Let me love you and leave you. See you tomorrow.